Okay, I wanted to go and uh, revisit something in the mixer design that we looked at uh, just the other day. Um, so here was the diode mixer that we were looking at, and uh, we have a couple of pin diodes, uh, and, and we had a model uh, parameter based on a Skyworks uh, diode that we were using. And we were trying to use a shunt stub in order to match the diodes to 50 ohms, and we remember we weren't getting too great a match. You can see that the return loss at three gigahertz was uh, around minus 3.25 uh, for the input ports and uh, about minus six for the output port. And that's not great. Now, we only looked at return loss. We never looked at what the actual impedance was, but you can see that, you know, if we maybe added some lumped components rather than doing that stub uh, match, uh, we might get a little bit better uh, uh, matching performance. You know, for instance, the uh, output match, uh, if we, it looks like if we just add a shunt inductance, it would put us pretty close to 50 ohms, uh, which would be a lot better than we're getting with uh, the current situation. Uh, even if we were to uh, do a similar uh, shunt uh, and series uh, inductor uh, for the input, we might get a better result. So let's go ahead and take the stubs off and see what happens with no stubs. I'm just going to select the components and deactivate them open. We'll save the design and we'll rerun the simulation. Again, you can see that the stubs weren't really doing very much. So now what I'm going to do is replace the matching or the matching circuits that are there with some shunt inductors and just see what happens. Give me a moment just to go back into the circuit schematic and make those changes. First, we're going to put a shunt inductance over near the output port. We're going to make this optimizable. And we're going to let it optimize from, say, a half a nano Henry up to, say, three nano Henry. Oops, I forgot we already have the nano Henry defined. We don't need to do that. No, I was doing it incorrectly. I didn't have a space. That was what was going on. Okay. So we also want to, if we're going to put a shunt inductor, we want to make sure that we have a DC blocked. So I'm going to come in and just add a DC block for the time being. We can figure out what the value of capacity that would need to be later on. I'm going to ground this and we're going to connect it to the output. I'm going to add shunt inductors at the input as well. Again, let's go ahead and DC block it. The ground on and wire this in. Okay, we're going to copy this. Wire it in. And then I actually just made the optimization variable the same as L1 before, since we're not going to be using that to optimize the stub length anymore. So that should be all set. And let's go back up to the top. And this time we're going to go ahead and run the optimization engine. All right, the optimizer is running. 
you can see already off the bat the match has gotten better just with those shunt components. You can also see that if I were to add a series capacitor at the uh, input side, uh, that, that would probably finish off the match and make it good. So I'm going to take a few moments and go ahead and do that. Okay, in order to get the uh, uh, simulation to converge uh, a little bit better, uh, I ran the optimization. I changed the goals a little bit. I relaxed the return loss uh, on these to uh, minus 15 dBs instead of minus 30 in the frequency range of interest. Uh, and the simulation converged pretty nicely. We didn't quite get uh, to the goal, but you're pretty close to minus 10 dBs return loss now at all three ports. Uh, and that's important. Now, what did our matching network end up looking like? Well, in this case, we could have we, we used kind of a series C shunt L at the input and a shunt L at the output. Of course, we could try and synthesize this with a stub if we were interested. The main thing that we're looking for is to get good return loss, and this can be done using either lumped components or transmission line components, distributed components. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this uh, now with the updated optimization uh, values. And then we're gonna go back up to the mixer test bench uh, and uh, check out the results. Okay, so after doing some investigation, uh, uh, the matching, I discovered that the capacitor was causing a bit of a trouble. So I'm gonna just short it for the time being. And we're gonna go back up to the top. And then the other thing I had noticed was that there was some convergence issues when I was running this. And so in order to fix those, I decided to use the more advanced uh, and robust convergence modes and the Krylov solver in the robust mode. Uh, these help with convergence. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. All right, the simulation ran, and we can look at the results. You can see that the conversion gain actually did improve just a little bit. We're at about minus 14 dB conversion gain. And of course, if we look at the conversion gain, for up conversion, it's still quite low as we would expect since we designed this as a down conversion mixer. Now, I didn't manage to get a perfect match on the mixer. Of course, you can try different network topologies in order to try and make your input port, RF input port, LO input port, and IF output port match uh, even better and you should get better results as you improve that match. Although once you start to get into a range where your return losses are in the minus eight to minus 10 dB ballpark, you're not going to see too much of an improvement just by improving the input matching. So with that, I'll go ahead and stop and talk to you next time.